What's up? So today we're going to be doing a non-power armor PvP meta build guide, like some shit you can actually get kills on with people who know what they're doing. Um, let's just get right into it, or I'll get right into it. We'll start with the gun. The uh, the best non-heavy gun by far is going to be the, uh, the railway rifle. Like the DPS is fucking leagues above everything else, even definitely leagues above the uh, Enclave Flamer. So this thing is what you're going to want. The only problem is the recoil, but we'll get into that pretty soon. Legendary effects. So quad, you're, you need quad. 10 shots is absolutely not enough. Um, obviously people don't have 1100 health, but they're going to be healing. You might miss a few shots. You probably will. This thing is a projectile weapon. I find the projectiles can be inconsistent at times. If you are actually trying to lead shots in like someone who's moving sideways or something, I, I you know, you're going to need more than 10, obviously. Fire rate, um, fire rate's multiplicative just because 25% faster fire rate. They can't really make that additive. It's the only second one in the game that's additive. Reload, you're going to be reloading a lot just in PvP in general. You don't really want that to be taking too long. I don't think the third star is ever a big deal, but I do like the reload. Now, let's get into how to actually use it. So we'll get into the settings later because the settings are actually crucial to this build. So the most notable reason why people don't use this out of VATS in competitive PvP, obviously if you're just shooting some food build and you want to VATS him, this thing is going to fucking beast. But the recoil is absolutely ridiculous on this thing. Um, I'm going to show y'all what it looks like not controlling it. That's immediately, that is crazy. You know, the it's mostly the first two or three shots I'd say that kick it up though. But um... In short, um, you're basically going to be turning up your Y sense and uh, making it so ADS doesn't slow down your sense. Um, I will show you how to do that and how I did it. It can be really annoying to go into the prefs file, so I use a I night editor. I'll show you that later. Oh, also a trick. So the first three shots, you can see that they by far recoil the most. So what I do is in hip fire, you don't have as much uh, you don't have as much recoil. I don't know. Not many people know that, or not many people care because most of the time you're not hip firing, but Hit fire the first few shots and then you aim down sights and you can control it really well. Like, let me go... Okay, you know, this is a pretty normal range for PvP. Like, you're never going to be shooting someone super far away in PvP. You're just not going to get kills like that. But let me show you how to how I control it. You know, that's, that's some good hits right there. You could definitely hit someone, especially if they're just jumping up and down. Makes it pretty easy because most people aren't going to be ADing because they need that Sentinels bonus. Like pretty much everyone fucking, you know, everyone does. It's meta. So we'll go into armor for this build. Uh, Assassin Sentinel AP. This is like pretty much what everyone has. Heavy leather. Um, I would go with any heavy armor. Contrary, some people think these resistances don't matter that much. They really do. Like you would want some uh, high resistances. Heavy leather. Not the Enclave Flamer does most. Well, yeah. You, you want a good mix. Personally, I don't have, uh, I do not have the armored backpack. To balance this out, I would get an armored backpack so I get a little more damage resistance. Also with this, you're not using, uh, any energy weapons, so you can use, uh, grounded, which is actually an extra 100, uh, an extra 100 energy resistance, which is, that's just nice. ASAP, um, actually, it's not really floating around, I was looking, but I would actually try to roll on your own a uh, one or two pieces with cryo resistance, maybe assassin's cryo resistance. When you roll a two star, it can give you a resistance with it. So I would actually try to go with that because cryos, it's uh, railway rifles and cryos are gonna be the weapons and flamers that uh, PVP players are gonna use. But if you, uh, if you really encounter too many flamers on whatever platform you're on or whoever you PVP, uh, this is a low level account, so I don't have that many perk cards, but I would just get the, uh, the legendary perk card that gives you flame resistance. I don't think it's really worth trying to get flame resist armor. And that's about it for that. Uh, you would probably want a, uh, a armored backpack or an energy resistance backpack, a shield rotas leathers, uh, that's standard under armor. If you really need a tutorial on under armor, just look it up. It's super basic. I would always go with, uh, road leathers because perception is decent. Agility is actually important. Some of them have endurance, but I like the agility for the 30% reduction. We'll get into the uh, perk cards now. Traveling Pharmacy, if you're in PvP, you're gonna be spamming chems. You cannot, you will not do well without spamming chems. Or maybe you can. Not against the top people though, not against the uh, uber chads. Bandolier, you abs Bandolier is not a food build perk on this. Um, the railway spikes are incredibly heavy. Let me take it off just so I can show you. So if you want to carry, uh, uh, like 700 is not that much. The stack weight is 137. That's fucking, that is ridiculous. You need Bandolier. Master Commando, Commando, Expert Commando. That's just standard damage. 
Tank killer, obviously you do want this. The stagger is super beneficial as well. Uh, long shot. Most people don't actually use long shot, but let me take it off. Uh, it's pretty accurate, but I would, you know, since I don't have any zoom, it looks more accurate than it is. I'll show you how to do no zoom, by the way, in this video. Um, it definitely looks more accurate than it is right now, but I do prefer to have that little bit extra accuracy. Range is never going to matter. You're never going to kill someone long range, not anyone decent. Endurance, life giver is just pretty good. Cola Knight, you're going to be spamming colas, obviously. Rejuvenated, I think rejuvenated is underrated. It makes the uh, the health bonus you get from food go up from 25 to 45. I think that's worth two perk points, definitely. It is more effective per perk point than life giver, so. And I, I had an extra point, so I just put ironclad on, because why not? One wander. Um, if you want to use those group perks, that's that's actually better. I just I didn't want to bother constantly uh, loading in my alt on a laptop or something like for the extra legendary perk damage or the uh, mutations. Field surgeon. Um, I actually run uh, I run born survivor and I do use stim packs in fights. Field surgeon is going to be really useful for that. It is a significant difference in how fast they work, and your healing rate is what matters in PvP. It's always about healing rate. Suppressor 3. This is really good, um, just survivability. Most people do hit 110, so maybe it's not always great, but a lot of people don't. Tenderizer. Tenderizer 1, because Tenderizer 3 only gives you a 7%, I think it's, I think it's actually 10%, 10% uh, damage, and I don't think the 5% difference is worth uh worth two perk points at all first aid do you stems um really for first aid you just want that first little burst of healing to last longer that's what really matters but the uh the extra passive or slower healing that you get is nice too nerd rage one i run half health on this build i'll get into that a little later uh, let me take off this food build shit um through hiker you're gonna be spamming quantums because you're like that evasive 45 uh damage resistance for three points is actually pretty good and you're gonna have really high agility because of your armor and a lot of other stuff born survivor half health um having an auto stim is super nice you don't have to do the animation or anything, so just worth it. Also, if you're not, if, you know, if you fuck up your quantums, that can really save you. Uh, dodgy, you know, everyone fucking knows dodgy is amazing. Bloody mess, pretty good, 5% damage for per perk point. Useful, serendipity, god tier. Um, if you're half health or bloodied or even full health, that's 30, uh, pretty much you take half damage under 30% health is effectively how it works in my opinion. Starch jeans, you don't, I, I, I went through a phase where I didn't use starch jeans and I just like fixed it myself whenever I mutate. It just it's not worth the hassle legendary perks this is a relatively low level account so i've only got a uh, level three agility level two endurance to give myself a few more points if you're higher level you'll have more leniency on what you can run just whatever you would want now let's go into aid most people know what aid they're going to be using or you know what aid is good nuka quantums obviously i don't multi i don't multiple quantum spam if you do want to do that and make a macro i think that's kind of lame but do your thing dude like you know macros aren't bannable they're never going to ban from acro realistically but i don't do that quantums um go through my aid bar so right away you know if you, right away is just useful for spamming quantums this, this is food shit um excel is just useful you get 15 hp off the three endurance and agility which is good psycho buff um you just want that extra max hp and that endurance it translates into plus 80 hp and then the damage so obviously that is the best uh it is the best damage buffer thing adrenal reaction serums if you if you're really rich or if you have a plug or i don't know i don't know these things aren't that hard to get you get a uh, minus 55 health from uh from adrenal reaction and you know if you don't want that in a fight which you obviously want more health then just run that it's pretty cheap small guns bobbleheads you know obviously if you have them or whatever find a duper super stims really good uh the covert manuals choose whatever you want minus 10 percent damage or damage versus most people are going to be hitting 110, so sometimes it doesn't really matter that much, honestly. And then I actually use a secondary gun. This is the uh, this is the Valentine's Day thing. This is mostly for uh, if I want to shoot a foodie long range, because this thing combined with the recoil and trying to predict like leading your shots, it's very difficult to hit people long range. So I just use this, the Atomy gun. It's it's good, you know. It's it's what I would use because 75 shots, you don't need quad with the big mag. <coughs> uh, health regen, that's kind of nice unless you fuck up. Like, if you fuck up your quantums, it's nice to have that. Increased damage by 20%. That's, like, the only legit way to get that, I'm pretty sure. Quick little side note. I was talking with some PvPer, and he was like, yeah, I use this, uh 
plasma gun and it's like a four star 20 percent damage that is so fucking cucked don't don't be a uh that's like being a fake legit because you can't get that normally and it's just blatantly better that's not even like using duped stuff that's just using hacked stuff that's not good that's no bueno oh and i forgot i actually don't have any uh stealth play mark threes but obviously you want to run those now, what I would do to practice recoil is just uh, that one thing I said before where you aim down sights after the first three shots. And then, you know, I would go into a uh, go into one of those custom worlds where it doesn't save characters so you don't have to worry about the steel. And oh my god, level 2000. Holy shit, what a fucking dork. Um, just practice it a bunch. Give it like 10 minutes a day for like maybe a week and you'll, you'll be pretty good at it. Oh, on a side note, armor-wise, having secret surface with the jetpack would be better, but... It's just not something I have, and, you know, I, I could get it, but I don't really bother. <clears throat> also, if you want to find PvP, if you want to just fight people, especially foodies, I think if you're level two to 300, you're going to see, like, half the PvP. Being a level 84, okay, you sacrifice, like, maybe four extra uh, special points, and you're going to find literally double the PvP. I just think it's so worth it to have, like, a side character or, you know, a level 84 because you, you can have all these perks and, you know, people will fight you a lot more. You would really be surprised. Especially wanted baiting, people will not shoot a level 300 wanted. It's very much rarer than you would want. Um, usually I am half HP. I find that's a good mix of uh, the additive damage bonus because if it's not multiplicative, it's not really worth going like 20% in my opinion. Half HP, you know, you get that bonus, you get serendipity, you get the auto stim, you get all the adrenal buffs and nerd rage one, which, you know, I find that's good. If you're low level and you're wearing like heavy armor, people do not expect that to be Assassin Sentinel's heavy armor. Especially if you got some scrub shit like i got the ibot helmet that's kind of a play on words because i'm recording and you know i think that's kind of funny to run an ibot because like haha i'm watching you gotcha it's like mad witty to me even though uh, never mind don't worry about it you would want an armored backpack obviously if you are curious about how this build actually works in pvp i do have uh, the previous video on my channel is just 10 minutes of straight pvp with that i was getting used to it so my recoil control wasn't great like it was literally the first day i had the gun so just know that but uh it, it's really effective. It's the best non-power armor build that you're going to be able to have. Overall, it's just pretty fun. It's nice, you know, using the skill shit. Because in my opinion, Ryos and Flamers and Enclave Flamers, it's so boring. Like, you're just jumping up and down, flaming somebody. And it's like, uh, yay, quantum spam in like a, a five minutes for one kill. I find that this can usually kill a lot quicker than that. But especially if you have that cryo resistance, it's going to help you out on those people. Uh, especially the fire rate. It starts to nerf your fire rate and especially your uh, your movement speed with the cryolators so that's very annoying to me oh a little side note on uh, wanted baiting something i find really fun is if i'm doing homework or editing a video or something like that where i have where i'm at my computer i'll uh i love getting wanted and then you just wait at your base behind like a level zero locked door and you wait for like footsteps it's because it's so boring sometimes just looking for pvp but if you're just waiting for it doing something it uh <clears throat> you know it, it makes that task kind of more enjoyable because like ooh, i get to alt tab into video games if someone comes up here the pvp is coming to you you know you're not you're not playing hours looking for it you know someone's coming up to you to kill you especially if you're level 80 they're not gonna suspect it and also well this, this door is level three because i just i just come out and say like what's up and it open please thank you if you make it a convincing noob base like they buy it like look at this this looks like something a noob would have like you know basic workbenches i actually don't have the crafting recipe for the other workbenches yet if you do have any uh, comments on the build where you think it could be improved, I'm completely open to that. Please leave that in the comments because, like, I'm really curious. What? Oh, I take my I took my gun out of here. I am curious about ways y'all think I can improve the build, or y'all could, obviously. But I think this is one of the most fun ways to play. But, uh, okay, I'm going to cut, and I'm going to show you how to get... Obviously, you can just use the slider for a high Y sensitivity. We'd like to show you a couple other things. And if you just do that, and you you're, the game slows down your sensitivity when you aim down sights, so you're going to be cranking it so high that it's going to be very difficult to just move around it's going to be hard to adapt to that but because you're gonna you know you're gonna be aiming down sights and if it's if your uh your sensitivity is slowed down when you're doing that you're gonna have to crank it way higher than otherwise so i'm gonna alt tab and show you the i and i editor i use and the exact settings now to make these ini changes it's so much easier to just use an ini &I editor <clears throat> i use fallout 76 quick configuration it's on Nexus. Very easy to use, very nice. Probably not a virus that's going to steal your crypto wallets. Video, not really important. 
uh, obviously crank your settings all the way down if you do feel like you're not getting good enough FPS. <clears throat> First off, field of view. I use 100 because I feel like that's a good balance between uh, targets not being too small <clears throat> and being able to see enough on your screen. Because if you just crank it to 120, you can actually crank it higher than 120. I believe to like 160-ish. But I, I find targets are just too small. It's a little hard to focus on. So I think 100 is a good balance. And you can actually change third person aim FOV. So that means you're not gonna zoom in. Like if I put that at one, I would zoom in to like one pixel. If you just keep that the same as your FOV, you, you just don't aim or you don't zoom in when you ADS. And I find that that's really helpful, especially because 99% of your fights in Fallout are gonna be like right next to somebody. Uh, horizontal sensitivity, vertical sensitivity. This is actually not just arbitrary numbers I took. This is um this is actually six times that number. I find that's a good balance. <clears throat> six times uh, vertical, just for that recoil control. And then you're gonna want fixed aim sensitivity. That's gonna make it so that your aim does not slow down when you aim down sights. You're gonna have to probably lower your overall sense. I already played a really low sense, so that was fine for me. If you don't do this, you're gonna need to crank this way higher than uh, than six times your XFOV. And that's just gonna generally make that adaptation from them being the same uh, much more difficult. I don't. I didn't think it was worth it. And I do enjoy playing without uh, two different separate sensitivities, so your uh, your reflexes kind of carry over a little bit. Also, here you can change your uh, your camera distance. You can make it look like comical, like like it's a top down game. Um, I don't really like that at all. I do. I did match these because I don't want my uh, camera distance to change ever. I want it to be consistent. So that's just what I did. Audio. I've got everything turned to 0.10 except voice and footsteps. <laughs> this is going to help you try hard a little bit. Footsteps are important for that uh, if you're going to be alt-tabbed wanted baiting. And I'm a little troll YouTuber, so I need the voices to be way louder than the in-game effects. And I think that about wraps it up. I hope y'all did enjoy. Um, like and sub if you did, please. I'm, I'm been really happy with the growth. You know, that's a lot of dopamine in my brain. And comment, uh, uh, as I said before, comment if you have any suggestions for the build. And thank you.